Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining the March Lunch and Learn with Virginia Family Network. This month, we are joined by Betsy with Recovery Unplugged. She is going to tell you more about their organization and some of their really great ways of connecting. Hi, thank you so much um, for hosting this and for having me. I'm really excited to be able to connect with you um, and people all across the state. Um, we're really excited at Recovery Unplugged about one of our newest offerings, which directly relates to teenagers or the adolescent population um, who may or may not be struggling. Um, so we're super excited to be able to share this with you all. Um, I'll touch on a little bit about who Recovery Unplugged is, who we are. Um, so we are a behavioral health uh, treatment center that offers various locations and uh, levels of care, but I'm really going to focus most on what I mentioned as one of our newest offerings um, throughout the state of Virginia. So that is our virtual substance use disorder, primary, co-occurring, adolescent, IOP program. So I know that's a mouthful. Basically, <laughs> the main bullet points are for that it's for ages 14 to 17. Um, teenagers who are struggling with substance use disorder to some capacity um, and may or may not have other co-occurring disorders such as depression, anxiety, things of that nature. Um, we expect Unfortunately, those things to all go hand in hand, and we're very equipped to to treat all of those issues. Um, and then as far as it being virtual, that means that we really have been able to remove those geographical barriers to care. So people can live anywhere in the state of Virginia. Um, it does not have to be their permanent residence. Um, however, they just need to live anywhere in the state of Virginia and have online access, which it's pretty much most of us, if not all of us in today's world, um, and they can join our virtual IOP program. Um, our IOP program meets three times a week for three hours per session, um, and that's typically in the, the late afternoon, early evening hours to allow for um, our participants to go to school, fulfill their you know daily activities, things like that, school, any extracurriculars. Um, so we're pretty flexible on, you know, that specific start time. Um, and then another cool thing before I get into, you know, some of the specific aspects of our program and what sets us apart from, you know, the traditional, uh, treatment center that you may or may not be used to. Um, something else that I'd like to note is in the theme of, you know, really increasing access to our programs, to the help that is available for people who are struggling um, we've also partnered with every single insurance company um, that operates in the state of Virginia, including Virginia Medicaid. So that's huge. Um, I probably don't have to explain too much about that, but again, um, really trying to remove as many barriers as possible, financial barriers being a huge part of why some people are, have been unable in the past to seek the treatment that they need. Um, so we really want to work with people and their families to, to help address this issue, which we know is fast growing in this country, in this state, um, and affecting younger and younger people every single day. Um, so that being said, um, I'd love to touch on, um, some of the aspects of our program that really set us apart, which, a huge part is our how we use music. Um, so you might have noticed by uh, our name, Recover and Plug, there's a little bit of a, a musical theme there. So we use music and the overall creative process, but heavily through music um, as a tool to engage our clients into the treatment process. So we are still utilizing many common methods and modalities throughout treatment. We are a clinical program. We want to do clinical work with clients and their families, um, whether that be through CBT, DBT, um, motivational interviewing, a variety of methods that are commonly used in these settings. Um, however, we're using music in various ways 
to engage the clients kind of as a catalyst to help break down their barriers, help them connect on a deeper level, because we know as human beings, we all connect to music on an emotional level. It's a universal experience that we all can share, um, depending on, you know, what music speaks to us and also opening our eyes to other music and artists that we may have never known before that speaks to us. It's also really great to help with connecting with peers and really anyone, any of the, any of the professionals that clients are working with as well, connecting with their peers in the program, connecting with people in their lives, in, in school, in their surroundings on a deeper level. It really is that common thread um, that we have found to work to ultimately, which this is, you know, kind of the next step is help clients get to a much more vulnerable place um, a lot quicker than traditional talk therapy um, has been proven to do. So that's something that we're really excited about. That is our passion. That is who we are. Um, we're not a music therapy program. So that's like a common misconception. It's not a program for only musicians or people who are musically inclined. This is a program for all humans who are struggling with substance use and co-occurring mental health disorders to really engage both sides of the brain and create deeper connections to themselves and the work that they're doing. This is great. And as I had told you when we first started talking, that one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to reach out to you and get to know more about Recovery Unplugged is because of that music piece. And after learning that this wasn't for music musicians specifically, um, that you don't really have to have any kind of like musical background because of music being such a strong point of being able to connect with people that I wanted to be able to share this with all of Virginia. Um, and as you and I were talking about before, I had known people and that there are other parents that I've been in contact with that are like, I know that they're just kind of telling their doctors, their treatment providers, whatever, just kind of whatever they want to hear to get out of having to go, that this creates a space that really opens up some real connection. Um, and we know how much youth and young adults really love music and really connect at a very deep level. Um, so that is why I was so interested in reaching out. Um, a couple of questions for you. Um, for those who don't know, what is IOP? You were talking about your IOP program. Sure. So IOP stands for intensive outpatient. Um, it's a level of care um, in the treatment world, um, which commonly is referred to as IOP. What that means is it's typically three hours per day, three times per week. Um, it's usually in the evenings, but again, different treatment centers can, you know, make hours at different times, especially for adolescents. Evenings makes the most sense, right? Because the majority of these kids are still in school during the day. Um, and what that means is it's three hours of a combination of group therapy and individual therapy. One of those sessions is going to be in part uh, an individual session with their primary therapist. And the majority of the other session times are going to be dedicated to group therapy, as well as um, any case management needs, any, any help that they might need with other issues outside of treatment that they need assistant with, assistance with, whether it's helping to, to create, to, to make specific doctor's appointments, helping with any legal issues that they might have, um, helping with any school-related documentation or issues that they might need help with, anything that kind of is like outside of the treatment center, but still obviously affects what is going on right now with that person. Um, and then any family involvement. So we really, really strongly encourage and pretty much almost <laughs> demand uh, family involvement to some degree, right? So um, especially for this population where majority of them, if not all of them are living with family of some sort. Um, and we really want to 
help that whole family environment heal from what is going on and kind of build steps to, you know, a better future for all of them. Um, and so that's incorporated into those blocks of time as well. And as well as any wraparound medical care that they might need. So virtually in our virtual program, we can also offer appointments related to any psychiatry needs, psychotropic medications, um, or any other medical needs that they might have that they might not have their own outpatient provider for. So it could be primary medicine, it could be a specialized um, medical need. And if for some reason it's so specialized that we don't have the ability we and they need help, we will work to connect them with an outpatient provider, whether it's virtually or remotely in their area. So that's also services that we provide um, so that we can really treat the whole person. You know, if someone is in substance use disorder treatment, but they have diabetes and they've been struggling to manage and control it, it's really gonna be hard for them to focus on treatment. So we see people as, you know, a whole person. We're not just dealing with just one little issue um, so that we can help them improve their lives on a whole basis. So that is what is meant by virtual IOP for recovery unplugged. Um, so it's a lot more than just the group therapy or just the individual sessions. That's great. The virtual option is huge. Like people can't always get to where they need to be, or it's not always offered in their locality, but then to be a complete wraparound program too. So everyone's kind of in on the same thing. It's not four different doctors, four different plans, four different times. Everyone's kind of like, no, we're going to do it all at once, which is great. Um, and again, youth are finicky little things. And if there's too much going on, they don't want to do any of it. So to make it this kind of three day a week kind of thing is great. Um, Absolutely. feel like it's every day I have to do something. I never have time to just be me. So right. that is great. Um, I know you talked about being partnered with almost all of the insurance programs and even Medicaid, which is huge. Um, but what does the referral process look like? Are people able to self-refer? Do they need someone to refer for them? Sure. Yeah. Great question. Um, so the referral process is, is pretty simple. Um, at the end, I'm going to show a graphic, which has my contact information at the bottom. You literally, anyone can call me or text me or email me at any time. Um, and I can be that first step in the referral process. Um, that way I can help along with anything that's needed. Basically the next steps are getting connected with our admissions department. Um, we do a phone assessment with the client. Um, the family is involved in that, um, in whatever level is possible for them. Um, but we do need to speak with the client to do a phone assessment once that is done, we'll have our medical and clinical uh, directors review each person very specifically because we want to make sure that we're the best fit for that person. Um, and then while that's happening, if they're utilizing insurance or if there's any kind of financial discussion, we will be having that discussion pretty much simultaneously with, in this situation, family members. Um, and from the beginning, family members will know exactly what is needed from a financial standpoint, if anything. We have the option for um, payment plans as well. So we really, again, try to remove as many barriers as needed um, to access care. Um, and then assuming all of that moves along in the process, um, we will coordinate with the family and the the prospective client to set up their online portal for the virtual program, which takes two minutes. They'll sign intake documents virtually, so everything truly is done virtually. Um, and then we will decide on a start date based on what time day of the week this is all happening on. They'll be able to start at the next date that we are having virtual services. Um which is never more than a few days away because it's of course three times a week. Um, and then it'll go from there. So 
the referral and admissions process can really be done in a matter of a couple hours if if needed. So we're we're very able to address any of that as quickly as needed. Um, and there's no commitment for going through this process. Um, so really it's just conversations. Um, and we will also work really diligently if we feel that someone might need a little bit more intensive care initially um, than our virtual program. We will work diligently with the family and the client to recommend other places and then continue to follow up with them to then maybe step down to our virtual program when they're in a more stable place. Um, all that being said, because we really take it seriously, whether you're coming to Recovery Unplugged or not, we want to help you find the help that you need. So we can take the burden off of you in that way as well. Great. And then how long does treatment typically last? Yeah. So at the virtual level, we're, we're still, you know, it's, it's a lot more flexible, right? Um, and it can be really, really client centered to their specific needs and desires. Um, but that being said, it's usually between one to two months. Our curriculum is, is typically around one month. Um, and again, if someone is really like, I want to continue on, that's absolutely possible. Um, and if someone you know, maybe needs a little bit more extra help, we can address that. Um, or if they want to step down to a lesser intensive uh, frequency, we can also assess that when that time comes as well. Wonderful. So I know I didn't have a ton of questions for you. If anybody watching has any questions, please put them in the chat. If we're not able to answer them, I'm sure I could reach out to Betsy and get more answers for you. And as she had mentioned, she's going to leave her information for you too. Um, I think this is such a great opportunity for youth and young adults. I love that it's kind of like a quick process. Um, again, youth are sometimes hard to kind of capture and get a hold of. So when you guys are okay, I'm agreeing, like, all right, let's get this done quick. And then it doesn't take up every day too. So there's lots of great features that are going to keep them at least hoping to look forward to being in a recovery process. Um, Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, I think it's important to remember that um, for, for youth, you know, with the music piece, it really has proven to be extremely helpful with adults too, of course. Um, but there's just a little bit something different to be said for, you know, the connection that today's youth has to music already. Um, so really just expanding on that and showing that, you know, hey, like this doesn't have to be boring. This doesn't have to be, you know, feel like it doesn't apply to you. You know, it's really, really catered to um, what, we see teenagers are going through in today's world um, with the virtual aspect as well. You know, that is very realistic to what many teenagers are operating in and some facet of their lives today or have been at some point. Um, you know, quarantine COVID was, was only a few years ago. So these teenagers really went through a lot in the virtual space um, and, you know, we really want to especially be able to be accessible for people who don't live in areas where there are a ton of in-person options. Yeah. Um, that was, you know, really something super important to us. And Virginia is a huge state with a lot of different types of areas, whether it be rural, suburban, or, you know, more like city life. Um you know, it's access accessible to all and really available to all, all people that, that need it. So that's our, our mission. And again, um, we had you, anyone can, can contact me at any time. And our admissions department has, uh, representatives available to walk through the admissions process at any stage, 24 hours a day. So there's someone there 24 hours a day. So we really, again, try to be as accessible as possible. So thank you so much. 
Um, I'm going to share my screen just to show this, this digital um, item and my contact information is on there. So here we go. And here it say, talks a little bit about the different bullet points that we talked about on this session, three to five days of group sessions per week, um, that being the three days and then sometimes the individual sessions or the family sessions or the uh, other types of appointments that we talked about with case management or medical can make it on more than three days if needed. Um, and then, you know, ages 14 to 17, so typically high schoolers. Um, if there are any high schoolers that are 18 years old, we can still treat you, um, whether it be in this program or we also have an adolescent, I'm sorry, an adult program that mirrors this this program structure as well. That's good to know too. Um, so Virginia Family Network typically works with families and then the youth are up to 17 years old. Kind of once you turn 18 and you're an adult, you the individual themselves would move over to our youth and young adults programming with youth move. So it's good to know that even they have the similar option and can find recovery and what they need. Yeah, absolutely. So really quickly, uh, for ages 18 and up, considered adults, um, we've been around for several years um, treating adults with substance use disorder and now also with mental health disorders as well. So we have a variety of specialized virtual programs like the one that I spoke about today. Um, but we also have inpatient and in-person programs programs for adults as well in the state of Virginia, as well as in several other states. Um, for more information, please contact me um, and we can talk more about some of the other programs. Um, but in the state of Virginia, again, also for all of these programs um, for adults or adolescents, we're in network with most Virginia Medicaid and all commercial insurance plans, um, as well as TRICARE and VA benefits, I'll mention as well. Um, and for in-person programs, people can bring their dog to treatment if needed. That's something unique about us. Um, and for our virtual programs, we have specialized ones such as Spanish speaking, primary mental health disorder uh, treatment, as well as um, the adolescent program and a faith-based substance use disorder primary program. So we have some different specialized options. If you know you do fit into one of those categories or uh, your family members do, um, or you want more information, definitely here to answer any questions. Um, so thank you so much. I really, really appreciate the opportunity to share this information because our primary purpose here is really just to spread the word that we're here and that we're here to help. Um, throughout the whole state of Virginia, so. Thank you for joining us today. And this was such great information for, I mean, it started for our youth, but really went kind of across the span. So, which is great because that's a lot of what NAMI Virginia also does is individuals across the lifetime. So it's good to know that there is great help out there for everyone. So again, thank you so much for joining Thank you so much. Have a great day.